Hello dear beloveds. I am a minute or so late. My apologies for that. I got distracted but I have been overwhelmed by the response to the invitation to meet your shadow archetype and um, as you can see I'm joyfully post yoga. I've been saying that all day and I have to say I did yoga at six o'clock this morning. So I have been post yoga since 7am this morning but I am embracing it. I have decided that I'm just not quite ready to um, put my regular clothes on yet and um, I'll do that later so every every meeting I've had today I'm like I'm just post yoga and they're like no problem I'm like I've been post yoga since 7 a.m. don't tell anyone but I'm very excited to be here with you and you've got me yes all very low-key um, and feeling really excited about the interest and the energy around um, having your shadow archetype identified for the women who commented who are graduates of the third level, of course, I laughed a little bit because you can do this for yourself at any time and you can also do it for everyone else. And I think the reason we're so deeply attracted to this work is uh, because we, we want to get to know ourselves better. You know, know thyself is the central spiritual edict and it, it's, it's about embracing all that we are and that is how we merge with our holiness. So when we give ourselves permission to investigate our shadow, our underbelly, to go into that subconscious basement and really connect with all of what we are, not just the parts of us that we want people to be um, aware of, we meet our holiness. You know, I say to my third level priestesses all the time, if you want to meet yourself as God, go to where your fear is because that is how you will meet yourself as God. Avoiding your fear is how you stay stuck in a kind of spiritual narcissism where everything has to be sunshine and rainbows and life can actually feel like that but not until you have the willingness to go deep into the underbelly of your subconscious and to, to get really comfortable with that part of yourself because all of it is holy and all of it is of God. So I'm just going to very briefly introduce to you what I'm doing today. I've got uh, six people who were the first six people to comment. If I've got energy after that, I will absolutely um, tune in to some more people. Um, so thank you for your enthusiasm. I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, only offering as much as, as I have capacity for today. Um, and I'll just see how much that is. It might be more than the first six people who commented. Uh, so we are looking at the shadow archetypes as Caroline Mace describes them. So we have four shadow archetypes that are our survival um, archetypes, if you like, and they sit in our survival uh, chakras, which are the three base chakras. Chakras. So we have the prostitute, and the prostitute is uh, really faithless. You're trading your faith for physical security. So basically, you're saying, I don't trust God. I have to stay in this shitty marriage or this bad job or whatever because I don't believe that I, that where my intuition is leading me, I can trust it um, because I, I, I'm just going to keep hedging my bets, basically. So I'm going to introduce these and then I'll tell you that they do have a light side as well and that is really the work that we're doing here together today is self-awareness of your shadow is not enough. We have to be willing to transmute our pain. What will you do with your pain? It's it's. Let's just work on the very obvious assumption that everybody has the shadow aspect to their identity. The question is what are you going to do with that? Once you get to know yourself better, you know, I've met some of the most incredibly self-aware women. Um, look at me trying to make my crappy yoga hair look better. Nah, it's just the way it is. Um, but they don't transmute their self-awareness into changing that energetic paradigm. So they just stay in the story of their wounds. Oh, I'm really, really self-aware of all my wounds. Whatever Caroline Mace calls this woundology, where we're so intimate with our wounds because we've done the work and we're so deeply connected to that self-awareness, but we don't actually then transmute our suffering. What will you do with your pain? Everybody has the suffering story, the pain story. The question is what separates us from those who just have a big, big filing cabinet of their, their suffering is what we will do with it. How will we transmute our pain so we may serve? So every shadow archetype has a light side. And the prostitute's light side is faith. She is the guardian of faith. Because when you have faith in God or faith in the infinite, you don't trade on your your faith for physical security. You trust where your intuition is taking you, even if it doesn't make sense. 
Okay, then we have the saboteur. I'm doing these in the reverse order of what I normally do. The saboteur is really sneaky and very often I'll meet her in these very self-aware spiritual women who've done heaps and heaps of work and know heaps about themselves, but the saboteur is running the show. A saboteur is the mean girl, the procrastinator. She's that inner critic. She's the, you don't, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You're not young enough. You're not pretty enough. And she takes away your feelings of choice. You, you feel hopeless and in despair when she's around and you just can't make things happen. So very often the saboteur will come along um, because we're about to meet our upper limit. So we're about to reach our capacity for good feeling. We're about to step into a new phase of our life. We're about to step into some wonderful part of what we're doing with the world and we we sabotage that and I've seen a number of my women in the third level do this especially at the moment where they're about to step into leadership and really to take off and they're being offered so much in the world and and it's too much their ego can't handle it they and they they sabotage and it's the saboteur who does that saboteur comes along in lots and lots of ways um, and she's very sneaky so it's often the one we look for because she sounds really reasonable she's also the cynic the saboteur cynic is a really really popular one as well but her guardian is the guardian of choice because when you are in that space of the light of the saboteur you realize you have infinite choice anything is possible how cool is that then we have the victim now the victim is like ugh. Everybody knows a victim. Everybody's been a victim. Everybody knows what that energy of the victim feels like. And it's often one we can really recognize very quickly in ourselves when we're playing the victim. The victim's guardian is self-esteem. And that's really cool, yeah, because it's like when your spiritual self-esteem is intact, you can't fall into the victim for more than a few minutes. You, you pull yourself out very quickly because you recognize that actually, even though the scenario, the situation, the life event didn't go as you wanted it to, because you trust God, because you haven't traded on your faith, because you have that sense of spiritual self-esteem, my life has a purpose and I'm going to keep bringing my, my understanding of my life back to that truth. There's something greater than just me supporting me and guiding me and therefore I have faith in the system I have faith in myself I have faith in God I have faith in a higher power I have that spiritual self-esteem to say okay so what that person did to me or what happened in my life was terrible or really crappy or just plain unfair that I will not let that derail me because I am going somewhere bigger further higher vaster deeper um, so the victim is a pretty obvious one. I won't go into the profile of that too much because it's pretty much one we're all very familiar with. And then we have the child. Now, in Caroline Mace's system of understanding the child, there's lots of categories of the child. But as we use it in the method, it's a very simple system. The child effectively has abdicated their power. They want to give away their power. They want to give away responsibility for their life. They don't want to be um, in responsibility for their life in any way. They'd much prefer to remain powerless than have to make choices and be God's hands and feet in the world. So, you know, the woman who ends up, you know, with no financial control in a marriage or the man who keeps ending up with a mother archetype in his relationships the person who keeps ending up in abusive relationships again and again, they're naive rather than innocent. And the child's light form is innocence because innocence turns lived experience into wisdom and turns, you know, turns that into gold. You don't just stay naive like, I don't know how I ended up in this situation again. It's because you gave a power, your power away, actually. It's just that you don't want to honor that or acknowledge that. All right. Let's have a little tea break. Lots of beautiful people here, very excited. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tune into the first six people who commented. <clears throat> then if I've got any more um, to give, I'll have a look at a few other people. Um, and what we're going to do is we're not just going to identify what shadow archetype is working for you and how it's playing out. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to go into the atonement together as a collective. So to, at the end of all of the evaluations that I do, we, whoever's here um, and led by me in this case, I'm going to take you into an energetic paradigm where we transmute the shadow into the light. So we're not just getting the information. This is not your old school intuitive reading where you just get a whole bunch of information and crap all over you and you go home and that's the end of it. 
we are here to change the paradigm. We are here to transmute the darkness into the light. And we do that, I mean, effectively, the more people here, the better, because we rise together. And even if I'm not evaluating you today, you undoubtedly have one of these shadow archetypes at play in your life right now. In fact, you have all of them at play in your life. It's just that at any given moment, in any particular scenario, one or the other will rise up. And all I'm doing is in the, the alchemy between me and the person that I'm evaluating means that I'm the best person to help you identify this particular shadow archetype at this particular moment. And I'll give you the context in which it's playing out in your life. So how is this shadow archetype at play? Sometimes it's in our work relationship. Sometimes it's in our um, personal relationship. Sometimes it's in our mothering or our fathering. Um, it's really specific, very specific to the events of your life and to the domains of your life. So it's not like the child is in every relationship in your life. It's It might be specifically in your interpersonal relationships with your partner that the child archetype is rearing its head. So I'll give you that information, but the information is not what's really exciting to me. What is exciting to me is that we together can transmute that energy and we can move the shadow to the light to Together. And we do that by just holding an energetic paradigm that invites you to surrender that new knowledge, that, that know thyself, remembering is the central spiritual edict, and to, to offer that up. As, a, as an offer to God, to the infinite, and to say, okay, I know myself better now and I'm willing to transmute my pain. What will I do with my pain? I'm either going to keep it as a lovely story, a narrative of suffering as to why I can't do and I got didn't get what I needed and blah, 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 or I'm going to say, now I understand myself better and I surrender my suffering to be of service to a greater good. And that's the paradigm that I want us to operate from. Okay, beautiful. Let's get in there. So I'm just going to have a look at the names on my list. I'm just going to invite us all to, if you're safe to do so, to come into this sacred space, this sacred container where we do this holy work together. Taking a deep breath in. And if you're able to close your eyes, please do that. And if not, simply fix your gaze on a point. And what we're doing effectively with our eyes closed and our breath deepened is we're signifying our intention to withdraw from the superficial world. We're withdrawing our attention from our dominant five senses and we're going within to the world within the world, the true world, the invisible vibration that is what we are truly made up of, that state of pure consciousness where we can affect matter most powerfully. It's the paradigm in which if we want to create change in our life that we should be operating from, not running around in the 3D world like a headless chook. But anchoring into the truth of what we are, which is pure, unlimited consciousness. And the more willing we are to meet our fear, the more willing we are to meet our shadow, the more we align with God consciousness, with infinite consciousness. Okay, so the first person on my list is Angie Morris. Angie, the archetype with you, my darling, oh, you're here, that's wonderful, lovely to see you here, is the prostitute. And don't be upset by that, no one likes to meet the prostitute, but the prostitute is actually a really great one for us to meet because we can very quickly work with the prostitute. So the prostitute is the guardian of faith. When the prostitute is showing up, it's you basically saying, I don't trust God, I don't trust my life, I have to hedge my bets, I have to have security in the physical world because I don't believe that my life can be as amazing and incredible as I feel like it could be. So there's this intuition rising in you that things need to change, that you are capable of so much more, that your life is so much more important than the ways that you've traded your faith and the places you've put your, um, you know, the, the, the need for physical security because you don't trust yourself. At the heart of this, it's about you not trusting yourself, my darling. You don't have that faith in yourself at this point in time. And, and when you become aware of what you truly are, you'll recognize that's you saying, I don't have faith in God. Now, it's quite easy for us to say, I have faith in God, I have faith in a higher power, I have faith in the universe or cosmos or source or whatever you call it. But you can't say that if you're not willing to say, I have faith in me. 
And at this stage, my darling, you, you can see that the universe has a bigger plan for you, but you don't have faith in you. Not deep down. Remember, we're in the subconscious here. This is the deep buried part of ourselves that we don't want to look at on the daily. But this is the part where we will create that paradigm change. So my darling, stay with me because at the end of this, we're going to go into that group intention where we're going to turn this shadow into the light and return the guardian of faith to her right form in your life. All right, Karen, darling Karen. Um, Karen, you are working here with the victim. So the victim archetype is playing out still very much in a, a, a pattern of belief around you that you can only achieve or attain so much and if you go outside of that, you'll be, um, this is really interesting, kind of punished by God. Or you're overstretching, you're overreaching. You need to stay fairly narrow and small in your own vision of your life because somehow if you try to reach outside of that you'll you're going to upset god and you'll be you'll be cast out by god now remember this is a deep often past life ancient fear that i'm tapping into here in your subconscious but the victim is very much in that belief that every time you rise, every time you feel yourself expanding into your vastness, you feel that same, you feel a contraction almost immediately. So it's like you open up and you feel that beautiful expansion, often through your devotion. And then you see that your influence and your reach could be greater and your capacity to serve could be bigger. And suddenly there's this contraction back in. And it's like interesting energy of the victim here. I haven't felt the victim show up like this before. The victim's obvious, often a very obvious archetype but for you my darling be aware that you have a very kind of closed lid or sealed lid on what you feel safe to to expand into when it comes to taking action in the world but in fact your destiny your path is far greater than that you are a part of the spiritual leadership of this new age and and don't be afraid of that and that victim will keep telling you that it's your job to stay small. It's almost like your job is to stay small, like God gave you that task. This is such curious energy, and I'm deeply fascinated um, by what I'm seeing here. It's like I'm seeing you sitting at the bottom of a well, and it's like this is the job God gave me. I just have to sit in the bottom of the well in the dark and the cold and the damp, and that's the most biggest service that I can do. But that's actually your victim talking. Your gloriousness is what God wants for you, and whatever story the ego is trying to play here is to keep you away from that truth. How fascinating. I love this stuff. I get very excited about meeting fear. So please, um, if I get all excited and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, it's not because I'm weird. It's because actually our fear is our freedom. And this is how we meet ourselves as God. As I said, I'm going to say it at the end of every one that I do, every evaluation I do, that we are going to transmute the fear into the light and return you to the guardian of self-esteem so you're deeply aware of your power to serve in this world, my darling, in an unlimited way. And we're going to do that at the end together. Renee Main, you are the next one for me, my darling. I'm not sure if you're here, but your name was third on my list. So here, my darling, we have the saboteur, loud and clear. And she is doing a number on you. And the way she's doing that is every time you go in the direction of something, there is like a block. So every time you go to, to create something, every time you go to, to really lock something down or anchor something in the world, it's like there's this shutdown energy. And that energy feels often as though it's coming from outside of you, but I want you to be very aware that it's actually being manufactured from inside. It's like it's safer to be rootless, to be anchorless, to not put down roots, to not create, to not build in the way that you've done before. Um, but actually the world is waiting for you. Like it's, it's strumming its fingers. God's kind of like, come on, come on. We're ready for you to anchor now. It's time for you to build. It's time for you to build the next empire. It's, you're an empire builder. That is your nature. And, and it's like you, you keep resisting that because there's this fear. There's this fear. And that fear, I have to tell you, is not a real fear. It's not your intuition. It's your saboteur. You are absolutely safe now to anchor your work back in the world and to really get back into that place of service in a really big way because that is what you are here for it's your mandate always has been always will be and we will move that fear back into the light the guardian of choice is the flip side of the saboteur and we're going to open that gateway to choice as we gather together at the end and we've got some very powerful priestesses on the call with me so i know that that energy transmission is going to be amazing remembering that even if i don't evaluate you directly 
we all carry these survival archetypes inside of us. And so every single one of us benefits when we gather together with the group intention to, to return the darkness to the light. Melissa Turnock, you're the next one on my list, my darling. So here we have the child archetype. And the child archetype is, is very much not... Hmm, let me feel this one because it's like... There's a little bit of reveling in the child archetype right now. Remembering that these, the, the, the light form is innocence. So there's, there's a fine line here. Part of, the, part of what I'm feeling is very much the light side, the innocence, the return to innocence, and a genuine, beautiful, open-heartedness. But the shadow of that is the child, and the child is still wanting something to stay in the darkness. So it's wanting to sort of stick to the stories of suffering or it's wanting to say, I didn't get what I needed, therefore I can't fully flourish into the light, which is innocence. There's still a, uh, an attachment to the suffering story, an attachment to wanting that legitimized and an attachment to wanting to feel the justification of I don't have to rise. I don't have to shine. I don't have to be the full expression of what I could be because I didn't get everything I needed in that phase of my life, in my own childhood. So the child sort of is a bit like this, a bit like I don't have to. I don't have to be a big girl. I don't have to take on that responsibility. I don't have to shine. I don't have to rise. And, and at the same time, you've got all this beautiful innocence energy and I want you to understand that it can be possible for these two things to be going on at the same time. This is old, deep, crappy, wounding stuff. And it's, you know, it's deep, deep down in the basement there. But what we're doing here together today is simply about holding that up into the light and saying, okay, I don't need this anymore. I'm giving it back to you, God, and you can take it. We don't have to go through the trauma of reinvesting in the story of when did it start and who did it to me and blah, 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 blah. You know, we can just say, okay, I'm done. With this self-awareness, I, I recognize the places I've been holding myself, myself back from being God and I hand it over to you and that's what we're going to do. Okay. <coughs> Sue McLeod. All right, my darling. And we have another prostitute, which is not a surprise. My priestesses will tell you when we do the method, which is what this is part of as part of the third level training. And if you have an intuitive intelligence session with one of the graduates, we see the prostitute a lot. And that's because we are all pretty much living faithlessly. We, If we lived with faith, if we truly lived with faith, most of us would have something different in our lives. Can I get a hell yeah? Is there anyone who wouldn't change something if they truly Truly, truly believed that God was in every breath. And that's the work of our life. Yes, that is what the calling of the spiritual seeker is, is to live 100% congruent with their faith. But there is always an invitation through some area of our life to look at, you know, what, where am I holding myself back from God? Where am I in my prostitute? And for you, my darling, let's have a look at where we're doing this. So the prostitute is showing up a lot. She's peppered throughout your life and, and particularly in this need for approval. So you will often curtail or change your habits and behaviors in order to get approval from the people around you. So that's in friendships and partnerships from, from, from every part of your work, you know, everywhere. The desire to be liked and approved of means that you often don't speak your truth. You often don't tell people what you need you hold back and that causes this kind of resentment and this grumpiness as though people don't understand me and people don't get me and I'm never, I'm always invisible and, and this feeling of not being seen or heard or valued. And it's because that's what you're doing to yourself. You are absolutely faithless in yourself. And that I say with so much love because how powerful is that to recognize that you don't have faith in yourself. The, the belief that you are worthy, you are loved just as you are. You are divine and perfect and holy just as you are, even if you make other people uncomfortable as hell. I make other people uncomfortable as hell all the time. And I love myself like crazy because when I'm doing the work, I'm looking, how can I be self-approving? How can I give to myself? 
So withdrawing your desire or need to be approved of is a very big first step in how we're going to move you away from, from the prostitute and into this guardian of faith, having faith in the self, the recognition that I am holy and I am God and I am approved of by that energy and everything else around me is simply going to have to mirror that when I hold that energy with absolute certainty. Okay, Tegan. I wrote down your last name. I think it's Towns, Tegan Towns. I'm not sure if you're here, my darling, but we'll have a little look. And here we have the child again. And the child here is definitely in that I don't want to take responsibility. I have had way too much responsibility. My life feels like a really big burden. I feel like I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. I don't want you to tell me that I have to take more responsibility. But in fact, all of that sense of burden and all of that sense of doing this on your own and all of that sense of life has been hard will fall away when you open to that truth of what you are, which is God consciousness or source or spirit, whatever language you use. And, and to awaken to the fact that that power resides inside of you, this return to innocence is the opening of the heart, the divine heart. And that heart has been closed off, my darling, because of the weariness that you feel about the burden of your life and the hard work of your life and that feeling of weight and responsibility. So now you're at that point where you're like, I just don't want you to tell me that I have to take more responsibility but this is of a holy nature it's an entirely different kind of responsibility it's that recognition that as a precious child of God I can do anything because that energy is what drives me I'm not weighted down by other people's um, you know expectations or behaviors or actions I am able to emancipate myself from all of that by holding myself back in my innocence. So as I said, we're going to move through this together. We're going to change the energy. We're going to go into a group intention together. All of you blessed beings who are here. I'm just going to quickly see if there's anybody else. I've got a little bit more to give right now. Shannon. All right, my darling Shannon. I think you mentioned that you feel the prostitute is with you and that is highly likely um, because the prostitute is in lots and lots of our interactions with the world. Um, they're all with us. As I say, it's not like I'm saying this is the one, you've got no other, you'll never have any other. They are all with us all of the time. It's just that in certain situations they rise and right now in the energy that I'm connecting with you, the alchemy between you and I means this is the best one for me to help serve you with to release right now. So even though, yes, the prostitute is there, my darling, it's the saboteur who is absolutely telling your story right now. And the saboteur is just shutting down all your choices. You cannot have, you don't have enough of, you're not this, you're not that. And, and that story seems so rational and reasonable um, that you, you speak it as though it's truth. So it's like, yes, yes, I absolutely, this is the beautiful contradiction, the spiritual paradox. You have that faith and you're absolutely with God and you're invested in knowing yourself as God. But at this 3D level, you're like, no, this is the story. This is the way it is. I don't have enough for this. I don't have enough of that. I can't have this. I can't have that. Other people get to have those experiences. That's just not me. Whatever the story is, you just, it seems so logical and like fact. You just go, okay. And instead of inviting God into that and saying, okay, that's what it feels like right now. And maybe that feels immutable and unchanging. But what if, in fact, it is changeable? And what if, in fact, if I truly let God into my 3D reality, I would find an entirely new world opens up in front of me? So there's over-identification with form right now, and that's how the saboteur is playing out for you, my darling. And I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, all right. Let me just see his names jump out at me. Kia. All right. Beautiful Kia. Hmm, we've got two fighting for you here right now. We've got the saboteur and we've got the victim and they're both having a little bit of a field day with you and they both want to tell your story for you. And they're in cahoots, of course, because our shadow archetypes love to kind of interact and engage with each other. And that's not a surprise because they're in our survival chakras. They're sitting there in our survival chakras waiting to tell our story of woe for us which is not in any way for me to reduce the truth of your lived experience, the, the things that you have lived through and survived, but the story that we tell ourselves about them is what we have control over. What will we do with our pain? 
And right now you're really, really doing big work, my darling sister. You are moving mountains. You are changing paradigms. You are busting through ancient fear stories. You are doing the work. And I just want to honor you and applaud you for that because it's big and I can feel it. And where I can support you is helping you recognize when that victim comes up. So the victim is the one that's really rising now as we're talking. And that absolute sense that things are outside of your control, that things are happening to you, that people are doing things to you. These are these are the stories that come up for you. It's like, I'm trying so hard. I am absolutely committed to change. I am pushing so hard for this to be a new paradigm. I don't want to stay in this place of feeling like the victim. And then it just feels like something else Will come along to make you feel like you are out of control and someone else has all the authority and the power and I want you to recognize that these are like the last vestiges the last last sort of trials on this particular journey that you're going on please don't think that I'm saying that we never have to meet our fears again that is not true but when things intensify as they are for you right now it's very often because you're about to reach a breakthrough okay and we're really breaking the back of this victim archetype for you and really releasing you from that paradigm all right my darling Chloe you can be my last one for now and then we're going to go into that group intention anyone who wants to be clear of their their shadow archetype that's playing up for them right now even if I didn't evaluate you that energy is available for you and we if you want to sit with me while we do this work please stick around because that is the real gold of this scenario the information the knowledge is like whatever um, you know really Whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is, are we willing to transmute the darkness into the light? All right. Okay, let's have a little look here. I said Chloe. Did I say Chloe? Yes, I did. Did I say Chloe? Yes. <laughs> so I've got like the full complement of shadow archetypes here, my darling, and they're all like this. Uh-huh, you think you're coming in here? You are not coming in here because this is our this is our territory and we are not letting you in here and this beautiful sense of energy of like oh just you know we want to keep this woman prisoner in her stories and I want to I want to acknowledge why for you my darling it's because you have fought so hard to free yourself of all the crap that you have experienced in your life and once again I want to acknowledge that because you have worked so hard and you've done so much and what can happen when we have a moving out of really challenging energy and you've been doing that for a long time is that those stories can become like our armor and they can become our defense against the world and it's a little bit like your shadows are standing here actually feeling like they're trying to protect you. They feel like it's their job to protect you and they really want to keep you safe. But of course, what's happening in that is that they are limiting you and keeping you stuck in your stories. So now is the time to feel safe, to, to shed the skin, all those layers of suffering. I do not have to be acknowledged by my suffering stories. I don't need to wear them as a badge of look at what I have survived. I can now have faith and it is the prostitute who we're primarily communicating with here. And the prostitute is, is willing now to say I I look at what I have achieved I want you to say that to yourself look at how far I have come look at what I have done and to have that faith as evidence that you are capable now of shedding all of the scars and the woundedness and to step out free and unfettered and yes challenges are going to keep coming because that is life in 3d reality but that is not how you earn your place that is not how you show your worth to god you are perfect and holy and divine just as you are and god wants you to feel that sense of god or source of spirit i use the word god but if you don't use it please don't don't be offended by it whatever word you use, just hold yourself connected to the truth that your beauty is greater than your pain and you are you are here with the guardian of faith and she wants you to rise and she wants you to rise not because of the things you have survived but because you are free now to make a choice about what you take forward with you. Okay, let's do this, my darlings. This is the fun part. As I said, we're going to get comfortable getting in my cross-legged position. And we're going to, for anyone who wants to transmute the fear into the light, turn those shadows into their guardian form, we're going to go into a very simple two or three minute practice where we, we call this the atonement. This is another part of the method. 
where I want you now just to sit with whatever you're feeling, whatever's come up if you've been evaluated, whatever pain or suffering you might be feeling right now. It might just be tiredness, it might be a headache, whatever is going on for you right now. Just allow yourself to feel it. Be really honest with yourself. And I want you to give yourself a number on a scale of 1 to 10 for what you're feeling right now that is less than joyful, less than divine, less than bliss. So it might, as I said, be a physical symptom. It might be a physical, it might be a physical symptom, but it might be an emotional pain. You might feel pissed off. You might feel tired. You might feel angry. You might feel enraged. You might feel sad. You might feel bitter. You might feel jealous. You might feel just anything at all that is less than your divine perfection. And rate that on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the most intense. And don't be afraid of that feeling. Just sit with that feeling. It's when we push away our fear and our negative feelings that we end up suffering because we push them down into the basement and they grow and they get root and they become more anchored in us. Our job is to be unafraid, to sit with the discomfort, to sit in the holy fire so that we may burn this away and emerge glorious into our truth. And I'm going to guide us through a very short practice where we're going to simply hand ourselves over to God or to the infinite and that energy is going to do its work in our subconscious basement to transmute that fear into love. And that is what we're doing. That is what healing is, is a move from fear to love. It's a return to love. It's that simple. And what we're changing is the vibration or the frequency. There's no point trying to change things and treating the symptoms in 3D reality because it's too late by the time it's in 3D reality. Okay? All right. Let's close down our eyes. Sit with whatever discomfort you're feeling, knowing you're completely safe and totally held by me. You're held by me and you're held by the infinite who is holding me and you're held by the women who gather here now at this time. There's no accidents as to those who listen now and those who will listen back later. There is no time and space. All is one. You are so loved and held by the angels, by the guardians, by the unseen forces that guide and protect us. We're in a space now where we can move from fear to love simply by being willing to surrender our pain. When you rate that, just put that number aside, knowing that just in just a few moments we're going to move that number down. We're going to move you from fear to love. And that when we do this together as a group energy, we exponentially increase the power to serve. All of us can move from the shadows to the light together. Everyone here is very safe. You are so held. I know so many of the women who are in this space with me right now are powerful beyond measure. We are holding you and the infinite is holding us. Good. You are so safe to let all of this pain go now. Taking a deep breath in and letting it go out through the mouth with an audible sigh. I am safe to let go all that does not serve me, all that stands between me and my truth. Anchoring into this energy that is becoming available now, the unseen energy that supports and guides us. Feel yourself breathing it in with every breath completely held and anchored. You are so supported here. You are so loved. I'm safe to receive unconditional love. knowing that this infinite intelligence will go to you exactly in accordance with what you need, in accordance with your highest good, in accordance with the permission that you grant it, that nothing can happen without your consent. You are always in control.
And you are so dearly loved. down all your fear now and hold your heart open to the possibility that you have always been divine and holy and nothing that has happened to you or that you have done has changed that. Take a deep breath in now and let it go. Look around now for that number, that feeling that you rated on a scale of one to 10. And when you find it, if you find it, give yourself a number for what you're feeling now. Our great hope is that number has come down with the collective energy of every person here. This is not a solo gig. This is collective consciousness uniting the purpose of moving us back into our true nature, which is love and that deep, true sense of love, which is agape, the divine love, not human love. So just bringing yourself back into this moment and when you're feeling ready, deepening your breath and blinking open your eyes. And if you'd like to share with us your number, your feeling right now, if that number's come down, just letting us witness you knowing that you are so safe and this work is benevolent and it is holy and it is of God and it can only ever serve us to move back to love. It's a pretty freaking amazing life. <laughs> Oh, I want to wait and just see if there's any responses there, but my kid keeps calling me. So give me one second. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> My, it was my son just calling and I just thought I really should answer that. He's called a few times. Shannon says, I've come to a five. My body was tingling and I needed to deeply yawn this energy out. This was amazing. Emma Jane is a one. Whoop, whoop. Susan's a three. Kia is down to a one. Amazing. Carrie went from a seven to a three. That is amazing. And what you can do, Shannon, for anyone else whose numbers above two, is you can just sit in that energy now. That energy has been created by us. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's benevolent. It is of God and God consciousness. And just sit yourself back in it for as long as you want to, um, knowing that you are being held by the highest possible vibration. Um, Laura's gone from an eight to a two. That is amazing. And when we're doing this work, we rate it just because it's really powerful to have an evidence base you know a lot of the time this energy work can be really kind of amorphous and take it on good faith and blah 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 but actually what if we started taking measures what if we start gathering baseline data what if we start looking for change over time hello glorious robin so beautiful to see you eight to a three that's amazing Letitia's feeling the love Pina says, increase my power to serve. Yes, and thank you to every single person who was here because that shift in energy we created collectively, that shift from fear to love is something that when we gather together as a group, that collective energy is what causes such massive change. And that change is a permanent shift in the subconscious, the rewiring of the neurological pathways that carry those stories. 
So we neutralize the trauma or the fear associated with the stories that we tell ourselves. So those stories are still there, the memories are still there, but you may notice now that that emotional charge is no longer firing in that cortisol adrenaline pumping way. Um, Karen says, thank you so much. I found it so interesting what came up. Awesome. That's good, my darling, because that's exactly what you're training to do. Um, and Shannon says, yes, I will. I'll sit in this energy and keep shifting this. Thank you so much. Um, Angie says, seven, halfway through my three-year-old son put a sticker on my hand and said, mum, you're the winner, winner, chicken dinner. I love that. You're getting confirmation from outside sources that, yes, you are amazing. And so what I want to just end with is just letting you know what we've been doing together today as part of the third level training. You know, my work with intuition is to have laser-like precision, to have evidence-based to have tools that you can measure change over time it's not just oh it's just trusted it's the vibe of the thing and or just to dump intuitive information on someone and then leave them with you know no way to work through that it is so important that as intuitive guides that we use really rigorous tools that have been tested over time. We cause positive change in the life of the people that we work with. We are the world leaders, and I truly believe the women who train inside of the Institute are, are creating a new industry standard of excellence for intuitive guidance, for this kind of work, because we need structure, we need scaffolding, we need to have systems that are gonna move us from fear to love, because so often intuitive information can be shared in a way that just causes more fear and more harm. And I am not interested in contributing to that paradigm. I want this revolution in intuition to happen. The women who are signing up for the third level are the leaders of that new paradigm. They train as contemporary mystics, as modern day priestesses, as spiritual leaders, and they qualify as intuitive guides recognized by the IICT worldwide and this training is world-class and and I'm so freaking proud of it I can't even tell you and yes we are Gemma yes we are so what I want to do is just let you know the interviews are open for the July intake um, please book an interview if you're interested March and, and April interviews booked out overnight we do have some times left in May if you have any questions you can contact the Institute but the best thing to do is if you've got questions book an interview you get to have 20 minutes with me which is not a terrible terrible thing um, to sit down with me and have some one-on-one -on -one time and I'll ask you some questions because I need to know you're ready I'm not looking for your CV of you know previous spiritual trainings I will know if you're ready energetically some of the women that come in are world leaders already some of them are spiritual leaders in their field some of them are already running incredibly successful spiritual businesses and some of them are seemingly just at the beginning of their spiritual journey but my job is to evaluate where you are based on the energy field that you're putting out and and it's not based on the words that you say so if you are interested, I'll share the link. Please do book in an interview time. If you want to have laser-like intuitive skill that is beyond just you know nice ideas, what I've done today, I wanted to just give you an inside look at part of the training. We learn nine domains, nine different ways of working with this energy. Um, we cover everything from holding sacred space to medical intuition to accessing the Akashic Library and going into past lives to identifying the shadow archetypes, channeling, and working with the sacred feminine um, and really everything in that you've seen today is part of what we do and it's it's a blessed life and I'm so grateful for it so thank you so much everybody um, the next intake begins July 29 um, and the interviews close May 30 and I'll share the link as I said uh, the next one after that will be February 2020 um, and we do have a wait list usually but we do have some spaces for this next intake so I'll share the information Mwah. thank you so much for hanging out with me that was epic I had so much fun please do let me know if you have any questions about what we did together or if you need any more support I'm here to help you just send me a message or comment on this post and I will respond all my love bye